Hey guys, this is your favorite YouTube channel and all the social media details on how you can reach out to me is in the description of the video. So kindly use those if you have any questions. So let us get into today's video. So um, today's video um, is going to be one of those technical videos that we do. I'm, I'm going to discuss the need for changing bearings on your engine so I will break it into parts like just the top end build and then you know the crank rebuild and then we will go to the complete rebuild and then we will um, discuss on slightly we will touch upon the oil seals and other stuff okay so um, basically you have to do a little bit of imagination here you know so whatever I'm going to tell you are going to be things that you have to imagine a bit so that you will get a clear and straightforward solution to the questions that might arise due to you know the kind of things that are going to be explained in this video so we will first break the entire engine rebuild into top end build crank rebuild and then the complete engine rebuild okay so let's say when we are doing the top end build by top end we would basically mean taking the cylinder and the head off and then probably checking if the piston needs replacement so there are two options actually so one you can just replace the rings so the second option is to replace the entire piston along with the rings so when you decide whether you have to replace the piston or just change the rings or you have to do a rebore is something that i have covered in the past but for the sake of this video let's say you remove the rings just insert the piston the piston should be slightly tight like it should not be freely moving if it is slightly tight then you can go al along with the same piston provided there is no damage in the piston also some situations wherein you know you do not have any scoring or let's say blow by on the piston then usually you can use the same piston and same rings but let's say the compression is little low but the piston is reasonably tight then you can just replace the rings and you will have to do a bit of running in okay so you can put the same size rings in such a situation but then then there are situations wherein you will have to replace a piston let's say a part of your ring a piston ring broke and you know it was in the combustion chamber and the top of your piston is completely gone you know it looks like Wolverine is living inside the <laughs> combustion chamber. So if that is the situation, then you will have to change the pistons along with the rings. So in such a situation, regardless to whether you have a blow by, regardless to whether, you know, there is any other kind of piston is completely okay. But then, you know, there are just things on the top, dings and all and scratched. Or if the piston has a crack uh, near the skirt or something, then probably you replace the piston with the ring. So now comes the second part wherein you have to do a rebore and replace the piston. So in such a situation you will have to do a running in and then you will also have to make sure that you change the top end bearing. So if unless and until the piston is going back and the rings are also going back without any you know modification you can use still I would recommend to change the top end bearing but you can still technically use the same. Now I'll tell you why. So Basically, let's say, you know, you have a piston moving inside the cylinder. So it actually puts a particular amount of stress on the bearing. So every rotation of the bearing actually has, you know, some amount of wear and tear in odd places. Like, let's say it might be slightly towards the bottom of the bearing when the entire piston is going down or maybe once the piston is coming up it might be at the top so we cannot find that out until and unless we do a proper forensic test wherein you know we take it under a microscope and see where the uh, wear and tear has happened so in such a case what usually is done is you you know replace the bearing just to be on the safer side because a new piston new set of rings or anything that will change the amount of stress on the existing bearings will actually cause the bearing to fail if you know we are going to put a differential amount of stress on it so i know that you know the entire example that i gave might be very complicated but it is 
as simple as this you are used to ride a cycle on a particular road so you know exactly how the road is how the terrain is let's say if there is a potholes on the road you know where to coast where to you know actually pedal but then let's say all of a sudden the road was redone or let's say all of a sudden the road got more damage or it got washed away during a rain so now you will have to modify your cycling to match the road so it is it is similar in case of a bearing also since there is a new piston new ring the amount of compression and the force exerted by the piston is going to be different so the bearing is going to experience a very different level of stress so at that time it is very advisable to change the bearing even if let's say you're putting the same piston and cylinder back i would still advise you to change the bearing because you know to be honest once these things are taken apart sometimes they get damaged like these needle bearings sometimes lose a needle or two i have noticed that a lot during my builds so that is a important thing that you need to pay attention to now let's say we we just covered the top and uh, rebuild so let's say while you have removed the uh, cylinder and when you check there is an amount of play in the crank so now you have to let's say replace the connecting rod maybe you know put a new crank pin so the connecting rod kit actually comes with a lower end crank bearing so you can be rest assured that that gets replaced so once you get the crank it is completely different in terms of its wear and tear so now again you will have to change the top end bearing because the old bearing might not work properly because you know even the connecting rod will experience a different level of stress now maybe it would be too free or maybe you know there might be friction because earlier uh, connecting rod had play because of which you know everything was happening smoothly so at that time also i would advise you to change the top end as well as the bottom end bearing now since the crank had come out what has happened is you have two crank bearings one on each side of the you know combustion chamber so these crank bearings also you know are run in in a particular way so it is always advisable to replace those when you are doing a crank bearing or you know crank rebuild rather so i hope till here things are clear to you so now let's talk about removing the crank so when you remove the crank you have to split the crank case so in such a scenario what happens is a lot of oil seals get damaged in the process if let's say you're either using a hydraulic press to press the crank out or let's say if you are using the crank separating tool to remove it still there would be a lot of stress on the oil seals oil seals are not expensive they are reasonably priced like you know under 200 rupees you can get the oil seals and replacing it is not a big deal since you are already in the the engine you already have everything taken apart it is advisable to replace the new oil seals as well so the gearbox bearings are what we would call optional as of now because you know they uh, since you haven't gone ahead and really done any change to the gearbox then obviously the bearings can hold but then again you know since you won't go into the engine again for the next 2 to 3 or maybe 5 years depending on your usage it is advisable to change those bearings as well like overall bearing cost is under 2000 rupees as of today maybe you know in future if you watch this video after a year or so the prices might change but then as of now the bearings and the oil seals combined would come under 20 to 2200 rupees so it is advisable to change all that now comes the next bit crank that is taken care of you have changed all the bearings you have changed all the oil seals but let's say there is a play in the clutch so once the engine is out this is your opportunity to actually look at that as well because i went a very wrong route um, initially i knew that if you you know reset the clutch of an rd350 sometimes things might not work in your favor like you know you might end up with clutch noise after the rebuild so i was kind of dreading this when i rebuilt the engine but then again one time when i was riding the bike i i could really feel that there is a lot of clutch play so then i you know took apart the side cover obviously by taking apart the side cover i had to drain the entire oil and then obviously i'll have to change the packing which is again very expensive compared to an rx uh, series bike so this time what happened is i saw there was at least 4 to 5 mm of play you know maybe 
I wouldn't be wrong. It's not four to five. It was over an inch, maybe two inch. So that was kind of dangerous. You know, this is the kind of play that you do not want to see in your bike. So what I did is I used the opportunity to actually go ahead and uh, replace the uh, clutch bushings also. So I got those. I replaced that. So this is your opportunity to check if there is play. Play can be checked very simply. You just need to hold the bell in one hand and you know try to twist it in both direction. If the bell and horn moves and the you know gear behind the clutch is not moving, that is your sign to rebuild your clutch. Or else, if you have noise in the clutch, then again you need to rebuild. There are some scenarios wherein you know uh, workshops usually end up breaking clutch bells with improper tools. So in such case also, you will have to replace the bell. So do not use the old rubbers. buy new use the new rivets everything and that should be taken care of so now we have covered almost everything like we have covered the oil seals now you know when to change bearings when to change oil seals you know what needs to be done in case you do a top end build so similar videos will keep on coming so i hope you enjoyed today's video and you were able to learn a bit through those videos if you did please like share and subscribe we have an interesting series coming on the road to a super bike using zero money so i would really want you guys to check that out as well there are a lot of informative videos in this channel so if you go back and look at different uh, videos from the past you might find some um, very useful videos that might solve certain questions that you have so i hope that you guys really learn something and we will meet you guys in the next video thank you